Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. We've got an interesting show for you today. This is sort of an omnibus show. We've got three main attractions. First, we're gonna do an unboxing and review. Then we're gonna take a look at that thing that's on the thumbnail. What is that thing? And then finally, we've got some mail. It's gonna be an awesome show. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stay tuned, guys. This is gonna be awesome. This is Recordology. So what is that thing on the thumbnail? What is that thing? We're gonna to get to that in a minute. It's just off camera to the right. But first, this. This is very interesting because for one thing, they shipped it to me in this box. It didn't come in a larger box. It just literally came in this box, which is kind of weird. Um, I would, if you, if you know the show, if you've been around for a while, by the way, thank you for your loyalty. If not, hit subscribe, join the family. And in so doing, you open up a world of hearing my voice, which drives some people absolutely bonkers, but that's okay. Okay, so what is this thing, you guys? Uh, let's open the box. I did, it's literally just held together with shipping tape on the sides, so I cut those to speed things up. Oh, it's a CD player. Are you serious? Another CD player? Well, this one's so cool because it's white. I just thought that was awesome. You don't see white electronics that much anymore. I mean, the iPod was like, you know, big into that for a while. But I thought, hey, we'll take a look at it. No, I don't think it, you know, justifies an entire show. So we've got some other goodies. But let's see what this thing comes with. Um, so you do get earbuds. Okay. These are hit or miss. The last, the last CD player, or I mean, I think it was a CD player we reviewed that came with earbuds. I thought they were going to be great, and they ended up being duds. So hopefully these are better. These are in-ear earbuds, not my favorite. The cord's kind of cool. It's sort of got this translucent cover on it. These guys do good stuff. Hot is a pretty popular brand on Amazon. Highly rated. If you go out there and look at their CD players, they've got a bunch of them. People seem to like them. So we'll have to check out, you know, the main attraction here in a minute. Very rubbery, this thing. It's very, very rubbery. I don't know what I think about that. I guess it's fine. You do get an audio cable, an aux cable. Uh, I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am glad that they are, start companies are starting to include, you know, some accessories instead of just the bare bones minimum. You also get a USB, is this a micro? I think this is a micro. Yeah, micro USB cable. Registration card. Oh, I thought there was a bug in there for a second. See that? What the heck? What in the heck is that? Wait, is it a bug? No. Okay, it stops moving when I set it down. What on earth? It's like tiny little ball bearings or something. What is that? Look at that. I think it's a metal ball bearing. That is not the most... That doesn't instill me with a lot of... Con what the heck is this? This must be like a, a QC, like a quality check deal, which nobody signed. Okay. This is interesting. I've never opened up a product and found ball bearings rolling around inside. Okay. Hey, why not, right? All right, let's check it out. Here is the main attraction. And yeah, this thing looks gorgeous. It's got a shiny white cover on it or you know top and this sort of brushed metal looking plastic piece around the side on the bottom white plastic rubberized feet there's a hold switch by the way guys that last cd player that we reviewed i've been using that as my daily driver uh, at night to listen to the movie audio and ambient audio I like to listen to because it transmits Bluetooth, which is really cool. I don't know if this one does, we'll see in a minute. But it's a cool feature because I have the Bluetooth sleep headphones and it works really, really nice to have no cord as you're laying there and uh, trying to fall asleep. All right, so let's take the film off of the display here. Okay, I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way, maybe. Is a little tab. Okay, I guess we're not doing that right now. Um, so, somewhere on there is, is, a, is a film. Let's take a tour around the outside edge. We have a headphone jack. We've got the latch to open it. Volume knob, I think. Yes, 
Love a volume knob versus a switch. Uh, reset switch, that's interesting. Uh, USB power supply and charging port, and that's probably a battery indicator. That's it. So it does have a rechargeable battery. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'm assuming this is going to clamshell from the side. Okay. That is just white plastic. There's the back side of the display. There's the transport. Again, the laser to the upper right-hand portion indents, not very deep ones, for leveraging removal of a CD. Typically, these are compatible with not only CD, but HD CD, HC, HC CD, not SA CD, but there's like this S -A -H -C CD, I think it is. I don't know if I've ever had one of those, as well as regular compact discs and uh, MP3 files, as well as WMA files on data disks that are burned. So, all righty. Well, let's go ahead and put a disk in there. This was a recent gift. You guys are awesome. This is a UK edition Patsy Cline. And you may say, oh, it looks like it's just a greatest hits. And there's so many Patsy Cline greatest hits albums out there. However, as you dig into the catalog, she had so much recorded music that hadn't been released at the time of her death to not only fill, you know, three or four albums that were released after she passed away, but there uh, were, were still songs that were being released, you know, for years and years later. And this actually has a couple of uh, the only CD copies of uh, certain songs. There's two or three songs on here. So I was really thankful to get this. And uh, even if I already had the music, it would have been cool. But this is Hallmark. So this is a UK re-release, I believe. Uh, I, I shouldn't say a re-release. It's a UK release. And as you can see by Pickwick down there, these are very high quality from my experience, these, uh, these Hallmark CDs. So there is the cover. Anyway, we're using this as our demonstration. Obviously, I can't play audio, so what I'm going to do, I mean, a CD player is going to sound, I'm going to I'm gonna listen to it with the headphones and let you know what I think about it. But let's take a look at the menu system and really see how it works. Again, I could find out a lot more, I'm sure, if I, you know, took the time to read the manual. So let's try press and hold or just tapping on play. Something's coming to life. We got three lines there. I'm assuming that means the disc is spinning up. Let's check that battery indicator light. I hear something going on in there. Yeah, I don't see anything on the battery indicator. Okay, so it looks like a liquid crystal display, not backlit, at least. I don't think it's backlit. Interesting. Anti-skip protection comes on automatically. Be curious if we can turn that off. There's an ASP button, so that's a good sign. Yeah, so you can turn that off. The reason why you would want to turn that off is it buffers the audio into RAM. So sometimes there can be compression with the audio as it's buffered. So it literally spins the disc up and reads it faster than you need in order to listen to the music just so that it can buffer that audio. That way, if you shake it or you set it down hard or you, you know, whatever, you're not going to have your song skip. But some people like to turn that off so they can get that pure, you know, lossless compression CD audio. Okay, so I'm going to hit play again. I guess I paused it. What is this? It's got like an ear. Is that going to be a transmit? Bluetooth transmit? Oh, this is like the EQ. So jazz, pop, rock, classic, bass boost. Okay, so it does have a Bluetooth function. Okay, so you can transmit Bluetooth with it. And you can also go into repeat all, intro only, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really cool. So this will transmit the audio as well, but there's no SD card slot, unlike the last one we reviewed. So your, MP your MP3s would need to be on a disc. So um, you can use the directory button to skip folders, which is a great feature. So if you have, like for instance, when I'm listening to, um, mp3s at night what i do is i have like a folder of movie audio a folder of ambient audio etc etc and if you have like a lot of tracks on there like i do so you don't have to skip through 190 tracks you can just you know 
jump from folder to folder and then dive into that. So having that file system is huge. And it may not sound like much, but if you have an MP3 player that doesn't have that, it can be very, very annoying. So, all right. What I'm going to do is hook up the headphones that came with it because I want to review the complete package. And I'm just going to listen to some music and let you know my thoughts. Okay, so I listened to it for quite a while and here are my thoughts. It's more basic of a unit than I thought it was going to be. By the way, the headphones that come with it, they sound okay. You know, there's, a, there's quite a bit of hiss in it, in it, which is not, you know, ideal. So I would upgrade. I put in some good headphones and it sounded fantastic. No hiss whatsoever. Good, rich sound. Definitely the EQ settings make a big difference depending on which one you're on. I do think that the display should have been backlit and the buttons are not backlit either. So I feel that I was a bit disappointed in that. Backlit buttons, backlit display, it doesn't have either of those things, which is a pretty common competitive feature to have of these modern CD players with the rechargeable batteries and all that stuff. So I was a bit disappointed. So I do feel it's basic in that regard. The only sort of high-end feature that I can really ascertain from it is the, is a Bluetooth transmission. So basically to pair a Bluetooth, you would press and hold this, put it into pairing mode, put your speaker there and it would pair and then you would hear the audio from here. I'm not gonna go through that on camera because it's just not that exciting to look at, but um, yeah. So I wanted to show you some of the specs though. And um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting little device. I mean, I think it's worth keeping. I think it's worth buying. It's just not the coolest CD player out there that I can, you know, that I've reviewed so far. And uh, so yeah, CD audio, MP3, WMAs, eight to 10 hours on a recharge, on a, on a battery charge. And we've talked about that before. I know that with the battery not being replaceable, at least not easily replaceable, it's going to wear out and it's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be around in 20 years. That battery is gonna last probably for several years and then the whole thing is gonna to need to be replaced, but it is what it is. So yeah, no backlit display, no backlit buttons, no SD card slot, does have the Bluetooth transmission feature. It sounds good, it sounds clean. I think that the DAC they're using is a good one because like I said, with good headphones, there was no hiss there was no you know, line noise or whatever. It just sounded clean. It sounded really, really good. The anti-skip is good for 40 seconds on CD player and 120 seconds on MP3 player. Another thing I just realized, this is not a programmable CD player. So that's a very basic functionality that this does not have. So it's a good CD player. It's a very basic CD player with the exception of the Bluetooth transmit. So if, that, if you just want a basic, CD player that'll play MP3, CDs, transmit Bluetooth, no programmability, not great for nighttime use, et cetera, et cetera, then yeah, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below because there's nothing wrong with it per se, but just be advised that um, you may say, oh, all these CD players are the same. Well, they're really not. You need It's worth looking a little bit deeper to see what they have, what they don't have. One last thing, there's a one of those bearings is embedded in the tape there, like in the box. Like what is going on in this factory? But it is an interesting product nonetheless. All right, now, what in the heck is that thing in the thumbnail? Let's look at that. The number one reason given in our recent poll as to why people haven't joined the Vinyl Nation, which is our paid membership program, is that they don't know about it. Don't let that happen to you. You now know you are invited. The Vinyl Nation, we do an extra show on Fridays that's an exclusive to members only. And we've got other benefits that are awesome as well, but that's the biggest thing. And on that, recently we've been reviewing this over the last couple of weeks. They've had exclusive access to the reviews and videos on this. I'm now going to start introducing it. I'm not gonna repeat what we did on that channel. So if you wanna see the reviews and the things we've done so far regarding this guy, you really need to, to, to join the nation. It costs, it's like four bucks a month. It's like, it's cheap, okay? So join be awesome, help support the channel, exclusive content. And this is a 1959 eight millimeter projector. Picked this thing up for 20 bucks at a Goodwill a few weeks ago. Wasn't expecting to get into film, but I did. And then subsequently I purchased a, an eight millimeter film collection. Uh, got some really, really cool stuff. However, three of the 10 films that I bought 
were Super 8. And because this is 1959, before Super 8 was released in the early 60s, it is not compatible with those Super 8 films. So I was kind of bummed. I was talking to uh, Peter, aka Fartemark, my friend, who of course has the capability to project Super 8 and 8 millimeter film, uh, possibly trading some film or whatnot. About that same time, I stumbled into, did I stumble in or did I just joyfully prance into another Goodwill and found another projector? Yes, that was a projector. And probably a lot of you already knew that, but that was a projector. We're gonna look at it in a second. So, but I did wanna show this guy to you. It works flawlessly. It's a 1959 Argus eight millimeter projector. Take note of the fact that there's a reel on the back. Also take note of the size of that um, hole there. So let me put this guy back. This is all metal. It has that sort of Eisenhower smell. It'll take you straight back. If you are a child of the 80s, as am I, you had usually a 16 millimeter movie projection. When you walked into class and you saw one of those big reels, 16 millimeter film, and the projector had been rolled into the middle of the room, the screen was pulled down, you were like, it's gonna be an awesome class today because we get to watch a film. Unless they made you fill out those stupid, you know, forms that like you were, proved you were paying attention. I hated that, but I digress. It's a cool projector. So here is our new little friend here. I was not intending on getting into film. I kind of did the other one on a whim, had so much fun doing it. I have been now, you know, progressively, you know, getting into this. That being said, I wasn't, you know, expecting to get another projector, but because of the issue of the films being eight millimeter versus super, or excuse me, yeah, eight millimeter versus super eight, there's a little bit of a difference if you wanna know what that difference is. They are not necessarily backwards compatible. So the Argus will never play super eight. However, a modern projector like this one, this is a, I don't know how you say that, Chinon, Chinon? is made in Japan, 1984 projector, is called a dual eight projector. And unlike the older one where you need to manually thread it, this one you just insert the film and it sucks it in, spits it out back here for the take up reel. Notice the size of that take up reel based on that reel I showed you earlier. Anyhow, so this plays both. A dual eight projector will play both. Now, some people say that the dual eight projectors are kind of rough on the film because they're the sprocket hole size and uh, location is a little bit different between the two films, but this will indeed play both, hopefully with no damage. The backside isn't nearly as exciting as the uh, other side. This is the 2500 GL. This I have not debuted on the Vinyl Nation yet. I just picked it up this week. It is not fully functional. When I turn it on, I only get a very low level of light if I'm in the L mode, which is I believe is low light mode. If I go into forward or reverse mode, there's no light, but it's got some great features of the switch to go from regular eight to super eight. And yeah, it's a, it's a great little projector. I'm really excited. Take this lens cap off here so you can see the lens. I'm really excited to learn more about this stuff. I haven't really, I was telling Peter, I haven't really, you know, experienced film since film school where I shot a lot of super 16 millimeter film. And uh, after I went into television broadcast, we started in uh, Umatic three quarter inch tape, moved on to beta SP and eventually into uh, some digital format. So I never touched film in television or in motion picture production. The uh, films I made in film school were film based. Everything I've produced since then has been digital. So it's been a different world. Um, so the last thing on this, so all that to say, we're going to be, you know, looking into this. Maybe I need a bulb. I'm not sure if it needs a belt, but, uh, the first thing it needs is a take up reel because you'll notice that larger size spindle is not compatible with the eight millimeter film reels. That is the super eight size. Now the supply reel has a sleeve that you can take off because that is a standard eight because you may be playing a standard eight, you may be playing a super eight. And therefore you've got the adapter, but they probably supplied a, a, a reel for the back side of this when you bought it. And that has since gone missing. By the way, $12.99, I just couldn't pass it up. So I'm excited, dual eight projector, and it ought to be a lot of fun. We'll be seeing more of this on the show. Just for the heck of it, I'm, I don't have the film collection out right now. It is safely stowed away in the Recordology vaults at the moment. 
again, if you want to see the films we got, we went through those in detail on the Vinyl Nation as well. However, I, I will insert a couple of clips of film here. Now, one thing I have noticed when filming this is that the image you're seeing on camera is more flickery and flashy than it is in real life. Also, the color tone of what I'm seeing is more of a sepia tone versus the pure black and white. So the iPhone is doing some sort of color correction. But this is fantastic. It's extremely watchable. I think it's great. It's so historic. It's so interesting. You got the Castle Films logo down there. All right, one more thing, guys. Let's do some mail. Okay, so we've never done this before. Why am I doing this here instead of at home? Because I'm way impatient. So my friend Nick in the UK sent another gift to me. I can't even believe it. Let's see what it is. Feels like a CD, which is so exciting. Let's see what it is. It has a note. As usual, the disc itself. Cool! Yes! My friend Nick, thank you, dude. This is great. Hey, this is good timing. My birthday was recently. This is cool. I didn't even know this existed. Oh, this is cool. Awesome. I can't wait to check this out. Thank you so much. And I've got your note here as well. I'll read that off camera. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, guys. And that is going to do it to all of my American friends out there. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I hope you have a wonderful break. I hope you don't have to work. If you do, thank you so very, very much. And to everybody, just thank you. I am thankful. What I am thankful for is you. So thank you for being out there. I appreciate you more than you could ever imagine, you guys. That's going to do it. We'll see you next time.